Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1004. Hey, if you want to download the sort 1003 to 1006, click on the link below the video. Hey, back in video 1003, we saw how to look up the second occurrence of a particular name. So if I say the third occurrence, our lookup formula has to find the third sue and return that rate. Now that was 1003. What we'd like to do here is when we change the number or the name, I want to conditionally format that entire row. Now, we're going to highlight this whole range and use a conditional formatting dialog box, but we're going to use a true-false logical formula. And sometimes it's easier to actually highlight a parallel uh, range of cells and build your formula, get it working so you see that we get two trues exactly where we want them, and then copy that formula and paste it into the dialog box. Hey, there's two ways I can think of how to do this. The first way involves the count if. Now, count if I'm going to do a range. Now, watch this. It's going to be strange. I'm going to type a colon. So it says A4 to A4, comma. And for the criteria, I'll also select A4. Now, I want to make an expandable range for this. So my cursor is touching the first A4. I'm going to hit the F4, lock it in all directions. But guess what? We need to highlight the whole row based on a name in this column. So I'm going to hit the F4 key one, two, three times, lock the column reference, but not the row, and do the same thing for the criteria. Now, this formula, if I copy it down and over, you can see it gives me, oh, one, two, three. So it's counting how many uh, particular names there are. When it gets to the next one, it gives me one, two, three. Now, what am I interested in? I'm interested in the true. Now, watch this. I'm going to highlight the whole range. Active cell, I'm going to hit F2, and I'm going to say, are you equal to 2? And then F4 to lock it in all directions. Now I'm going to hold Control and Enter to populate that edited formula into all the cells. Well, wait a second. Now I'm getting a true anytime it's an occurrence of uh, the second name. And I really want just whatever's based on here. So watch this, F2. That's one logical formula delivering one true or false, but we have two conditions. So I'm going to put that in the logical one argument of the and, come to the end, type a comma. And our second condition will say, hey, is that locked with the column reference lock, but not the row? Are you equal to that locked in all directions? And when I Control Enter to populate that formula, now I'm getting my series of trues and falses. If I change this to 1, now the trues are there. Remember, if I change this to 3, the trues are there. If I change the name, remember, trues and falses will trigger the formatting. Now, that's one way to go, but there's another way also. In our last video, remember, we used the match function. So match to look up a particular um, whoever we select here. So I'm going to lock this in all direction, F4, comma, the lookup um, array. Highlight that whole range, F4. And the trick is, as we saw in the last video, match type, I want exact match or zero. Remember, when there's duplicates, what does exact match do? It will only return the pos relative position of the first item. So when we get down to fill, it's only returning number seven, because uh, fills in the seventh position. So I really want right now the third. I need 7, 8, 9, no problem. F2 to put it in edit mode, just as we did last video plus whatever I select from here, F4. That's one too many, so we subtract one. Control Enter. Now, that's silly. There are nines everywhere, right? But we got that row right. F2, I'm going to say equals to rows. And rows, I'm sitting in F4, so F dollar sign 4 colon F4. This rows will have an expandable range as we copy down. It'll give me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and obviously the only the one at the ninth position will give me true, true, control, enter, populate all those cells. So there we go. If I change this back to two and sue, boom, there's our truths. Now, the trick is, which one of these formulas do we use? Well, now that we have these in the cells, I'm going to come over here and change this data set. Notice this first column is sorted. But what if it wasn't sorted? Maybe it was sorted by the numbers. Now check this out. Which one of these formulas work? The first sue, it looks like this one, and this one. But let's change it to the second. So we're testing our formulas. So the second sue down here, true, true is working. But 
it's not working over here. And here's the thing. In video 103, the lookup formula we created was dependent on the fact that this column was sorted. And so, uh, and that's how match dealt with the duplicates. It finds the first one. And if they're sorted, we can just jump forward that many. So if you wanted, if your data set was always sorted, you could use this one. If it's not, then we need to use the count if. Now I'm going to control Z. I'm going to use the count if. I'm going to take the formula from the upper left, from this range right here. It's a parallel size range. I'm going to copy the formula from the upper left cell, control C. And when I highlight this range, the active cell is the upper leftmost uh, cell. And I can use either two keyboards. The old keyboard in 2003 or earlier was Alt-O-D. And once this dialog box opened, you had to hold Alt and hit N to get to that new. Or you can use the new, since 2007, Alt-H-L-N. And then we use a formula. I'm going to use my count ifs, control V, format. And then you could do whatever formatting you want. Click OK, click OK. And now we can test it. This column is not sorted, and it looks like it's working. We got Sue and Sue. However, if we sort it, it'll work also. Whoops, I want to sort these. So I'm going to sort bloop, down here, right click sort, A to Z. So there we go. All right, uh, video 103, we did look up on a sorted column to return this, the N occurrence. Next video, 1005, we'll do it a formula to look up when the column may not be sorted. All right, see you next video.